Hey, how's it going everybody? In the next couple of videos that I'll be uploading to the channel, we're going to take a good look at Django. Django is one of the most popular web frameworks to use for your backend. In fact, ranked by the number of GitHub stars that the repository has, it is only second to Laravel as you can see in this chart. So having said that, we're going to start by learning how to install Django, how we can set up a new blank project, and what the initial file structure looks like. So to begin in PyCharm, we're going to click on File and New Project. And when we create the new project, we definitely want to make sure that we have the new environment using event set. And in addition, we need to specify a name and we're simply going to call this Django minus project. Once that's done, we can confirm by pressing OK and open this project in this window. If you open the sidebar, you can now see that we have the Django project and within this, we only have a virtual environment and nothing else. We're going to install Django within our virtual environment using pip. Now, if there's any troubles that you have with your virtual environment, I'll be leaving a link down in the description below that you can go ahead and visit if there's any trouble with that. Down below in the terminal, you want to make sure of two things. First off, that the path that you see in the terminal is pointing towards the path that you have open in the file tree on the left-hand side. And in addition to that, you should make sure that the venv is actually activated, but that is usually the case by default when you make a new project. So now within the terminal, we're simply going to write pip install Django and confirm by pressing enter. To make sure that you do have Django installed correctly, what you can write is python hyphen m Django and two hyphens and then version. And once you confirm, you can see that the version is displayed down below. Next up, we can go ahead and write Django admin. Now, if we check that out in the terminal, you will see that we get a whole list of available commands to us. And one of these commands is called start project. Now that's gonna be helpful to us because that's exactly what we wanna do. We wanna start a project. So let's go ahead and make use of that command. Let's write Django admin start project and then give the project a name such as example project. Once that's run, you can see in the file tree that we have a new folder called example project with another subfolder called example project and manage.py. We're gonna go into the details of that in just a moment. What's more interesting at the moment is that you can actually go ahead and run this project already without having written a single line of code. So let's run the project locally by first changing directory to the example project that we just created. And once we've changed directory, we simply are going to execute Python manage py run server. In the terminal output, you can see a link. And if you go ahead and navigate to it, you can see that we have the standard Django website up, which tells us that everything has installed correctly. The final thing that I want to touch on is the file structure that you can see in the file tree in our Django project. Especially for people starting out with Django, the file structure might seem a little bit intimidating because before you have even written your first line of code, you already have a lot of files and folders that you have to deal with. The reason behind this is that Django comes with a lot of features that are already baked into the framework that help us out later on when we're building larger projects. These features include things like view handling, URL routing, form handling, or authentication and authorization of users. And since Django is such a feature-rich framework, you might have already heard of it being referred to as a batteries included framework. So coming back to the file structure, I only want to touch upon the most important ones and we'll leave the rest out for later. So the first important one that comes to my mind is the settings.py file, which as the name already suggests, handles all of your settings. That includes things like the database connections that you have, but also the installed functional blocks of your website, which we call installed apps. And apart from that, it also handles a couple of things concerning the authorization and smaller things like the time zone or language code. The next important one is the urls.py file, which handles the routing within your project. As you can see, we already have a route defined within this blank project, and that is the admin route. So if we go ahead and open the browser again, and if I add the root, which is admin, we are brought to the admin dashboard. And that is exactly what this root configuration does over here. The final file that's worthy to mention is the manage.py file. This is the command line tool for interacting with all sorts of aspects of your Django project, such as running the project or the development server. And in fact, we actually used it earlier when we ran the project by writing Python manage.py run server. 
We're going to leave it here for this video. If it helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel and see you in the next Django video.